Hello lovelies, welcome to the video. I'm sorry it's been a while. Uh, as some of you might know, I actually have a theme for you today that is fully inspired by Singapore, not just in researching the country, but actually visiting it. Yay! We had a family holiday just uh, a couple, like last week, so I'm still sort of getting back into the swing of things here. Um, but yeah, we went to Singapore for 10 days, so I'm going to tell you all about the trip and what I discovered and how unique the country is and how amazing it is. I can't wait to share with you everything I learnt and felt about the experience. So let's get into it and I'll see you at the end for the choices for next month. So where to begin? I think it will be a struggle for me to sort of keep my rambling to a minimum. Um, I'll try and tell you a bit about the trip with relevance to what I'm drawing so that um, it sort of relates. But yes, if I get taken away in my own experiences, I do apologize. <laughs> So starting with the cover page, basically what I wanted to do on the cover page is stick with the idea of a girl, a character being created from what I feel the country represents. And for me, the most standout feature of Singapore and the thing that's most memorable for me is the way that Singapore has included biophilic design across everywhere. Um, so from the minute we sat down coming into the into the country on the plane I could see how lush and green everything was and then as we're driving out from the airport to our hotel um, which was nearby Clark Key it was about a half an hour drive but the whole drive was just covered with greenery everywhere the sides of the freeways the in the distance coming out the buildings like just anywhere there was metal they will try and hide it and they'll just run um, ivy and all these luscious green foliage everywhere so I was really amazed by that and I just think everyone should do that every country should try and hide any unsightly metal with plants it just looks stunning and it was so refreshing like the air smelt good it felt really good to be in such fresh conditions. I suppose it did help as well that it was, it's a humid tropical place. So it wasn't that humid when we were there. We were so lucky with the weather. Our driver from the airport told us that it had been raining for like two weeks straight and it was quite heavy rain. So no wonder the foliage looked so lush to us. Um, but yeah, we were so lucky when we got there. I think we only had one to two days of rain the first eight days was just sunshine and although it was still hot I'm used to the heat being from Australia so we were already coming from summer so it wasn't too shocking for us but it just it wasn't as humid as I had been told and when I was a kid I went there when I was about 12 and all I remember was how stinking hot and just awful we felt because we couldn't cool down so yes, we were very lucky with the weather and everywhere was had beautiful refrigerated air conditioning. So all the events that we went to and all the um, places that we explored, we had that nice um, opportunity to freshen up as we stepped inside. It was very rewarding. Uh, but yeah, so because of this beautiful foliage everywhere, I wanted to design a character or like a piece that reflected how the two work together. So when you first arrive in Singapore at the Changi Airport, very well known airport and definitely a place to visit even when you are not traveling, like not flying out. We actually did that on one of our last days. We decided to go to the airport as our little adventure for the day. Um, so we weren't even flying out. We just went there to check it out. And that just seemed so odd to me before I experienced it. But yeah, once you are there, the jewel at Changi Airport is incredible. It has this amazing waterfall called the Rain Vortex, and it travels through the center of the ceiling down into the main part of the jewel. And it's just so beautiful in there. The whole, the whole jewel inside is levels and tiers of forest, which is called the Shiseido Forest Valley. Um, so all you can smell is this luscious green you know healthy smells and then the water falling down it was just so refreshing being in there and I could see it as I mean I heard from locals that that students and people on their break even go there to just study and have a little mindfulness time um, so yeah it's something really unique that I've never heard of in anywhere else so was really impressed by that so I wanted to make sure that I included that in my cover as well 
This indoor waterfall holds the record for being the largest indoor waterfall in the world, which is pretty cool. And they also have a load of other activities that you can do while you're waiting for your flights or if you just wanted to visit the airport for shopping. I mean, there's tons of places to eat and shop at this venue as well. But what I was impressed with was the top level of the jewel um, housed some entertainment activities, which was great for families. So we took our kids through the hedge maze uh, the mirror maze. They had all these topiary trees made uh, out of flowers and they were forming animals that you could take a photo with. They had lots of Disney scenes set up around the place as well, which the kids love taking photos with. There was the bridge that goes across the very top of the jewel. And then also my favorite was the walking net. So they had like a net that's right at the top of the jewel and it's adults and children alike can walk on it and there was a bouncing net as well. But yeah, you could just walk over this net and look right down to the very base of the whole building. So me being slightly afraid of heights, by the end of this trip, I didn't have any fear remaining. Like I had to, I'll talk more about that later, but I basically had to push through so many of my fears on this trip. Um, but this was actually a really cool experience, just being able to go on something that the kids would do all the time, you know, at any play center and feeling that sort of that fear of being floating. Um, I was actually able to do it because a lot of the time I don't do those things and you sort of had to go with the children anyway. It had to have an adult accompaniment. So I did it and I'm so stoked that I did. It was really fun. So I really loved those canopy net walks at the top of the jewel as well. But now on to what I'm painting here. So the idea of it was I wanted to pay homage to the jewel design. Now the jewel, the outside of the airport um, building, it's got all these glass panes, just completely glass panes in a big jewel shape. So I wanted to kind of keep that sort of modern vibe in the character itself. So I used a lot of shards and sort of tried to make it look like she was um, made of glass or robotic or something. But then everything else about her is natural. So she's um, still got human aspects and there's lush forest hair just cascading over her. And then I also included the actual jewel as if she was holding it in her hands with the vortex, the rain vortex waterfall coming down. So this is just really a fun one for me to illustrate. I had a lot of fun doing this. I used um, watercolor and gouache for this one. And the other thing that I wanted to add is the butterflies around her. The butterflies are a nod to the butterfly garden that's also at the Changi airport as well. It is the world's first butterfly garden that's in an airport and has over a thousand butterflies in there and with over 40 species. So I just wanted to try and add those into the picture as well, um, just for an extra bit of interest. So as I said, I was really taken aback by how much nature was on display throughout, not just the airport, but in Singapore in general. Um, like literally you would look across to the city and see buildings sprouting massive trees from the balconies or from the roofs or just running down the edges of the buildings. It was just stunning. I just can't express it. So I just wanted to do my best to try and show it through this cover piece. And now, as you can see, I actually painted this one on an A4 page, um, which meant I had to shrink it down and print it to stick in the journal. So this is one of the first times I think I've done that. Usually I do just put the original piece into the journal, but I did really like this one and I kind of knew that I couldn't get the detail I needed at the A5 size. So that's why I worked on the A4 and then just gave a printed version. And it kind of worked out lucky too, because some of the butterflies I didn't like on the original. So I just altered them, cut them out of the printed version. So once I printed that at the right colors, I've stuck that into my journal and I will do something else with the piece that I've done. Maybe display it or pop it for sale or something I haven't decided just yet. Um, and so now I'm just going to write the word April and Singapore to remind me, not that I'll ever forget this trip because it's officially our favorite trip so far. It was our first actually as a family, but we just were so impressed with how things ran. So we had an itinerary. My husband did up a really 
cool plan of attack. So each day we experienced at least two activities or two places to see and we stuck to it and it worked so well. So um, yeah, we're really happy that we put in the research before going to make sure we didn't miss anything important to us. So we had the busiest days and did between 10,000 and 19,000 steps daily. So every afternoon we would be quite knackered, come home, um, back to the hotel and just have have a little drink and sort of a rest. And then we'd go down to the pool and the kids would have a swim. It was just it was so good having that balance between being active, seeing everything you need, but then also keeping the afternoons free for a bit of relaxation. So really well balanced and it just went smoothly. So you can probably still hear the excitement and the, the happiness that it all went to plan because I must say I was nervous. I felt nervous originally when we booked it that something wouldn't work out or that we wouldn't get there or we just... I, I'm a bit of a stress head, so I think I was just worrying unnecessarily. Um, but yeah, I just couldn't help it. It had been so long since we'd traveled and we'd never done it with kids. And we just wanted to make sure that we were all healthy and everything worked correctly. So yes, we thanked the Lord or whoever is looking after us that things were going well. And um, we felt very grateful for how the whole trip turned out. So what you just saw me do as well, I'm using a dip pen to write the word Singapore. I've been getting into dip pen calligraphy lately and I basically found this art store, bought a new set of nibs and this particular pen. I'll talk more about it because I got very excited. In fact, I just thought I'd quickly interrupt myself for something exciting. You might find it exciting. It's probably not exciting. It's just exciting to me. Um, while I was in Singapore, I found the greatest art store ever. <laughs> I am from little old Perth and we have like probably under a handful of art shops in the city, the entire city. Um, so when I found this place called Overjoyed, exactly what I felt. I was overjoyed. The selections were incredible. Paints, cards, papers, journals, inks, calligraphy, pope, like honestly, everything I could imagine. So I couldn't resist making a couple of purchases. Um, so I bought this dip pen. It's like a, it's called Moblique. So it's got two, it's got like a, a part for your nibs in here. When you undo it, you can get your nibs in there. And when we, there's like a separate holder bit, which I don't know where I've put it, but it's like, so it can be an oblique calligraphy pen as well, or you can just stick your nibs into the front and use it as a straight one. So I was very excited to get that. I loved the color too, and it's made of silicon, which is nice and smooth. Um, and then I also got, um, oh, where are they? Oh, ah. <laughs> my most exciting thing is acrylic gouache. <laughs> I was ridiculously excited to find acrylic gouache um, individual colors for sale here. And they were just so much cheaper. Like if I was to buy them from Perth and get them shipped across, cause I have to get them from either America or um, Japan or England, somewhere like that. Um, all of them would be like $9 each plus delivery, which usually was like 30 to 40, 50 bucks to get over here. So I didn't ever want to do that because it just didn't seem fair in a family full of other uh, bills to pay. So I always avoided it. But when I was in Singapore, it was like day five and I thought, um, oh, I wonder if they sell acrylic gouache anywhere locally. And so they did, and it was right by our, um, well, not really right by our hotel, but it was easy to jump on the train and get off like one stop or two stops away. And it was right there. So we did take a visit and I just, I honestly felt hot inside and like so um, jittery and excited by this art store. I know it's, does anyone else ever feel that going into a stationery or art store? It's it's, I feel like it's a disorder, <laughs> but um, yeah, so these were the gouache uh, colors that I chose. I'll put them on screen a little bit clearer. I haven't used them yet and I'm so excited to use them. I just want to make sure it's the right kind of piece because when I was choosing the colors, I did choose quite pastel based or even just color palettes that I like the look of. Um, so I'm going to work on a piece soon and share that with you, or it might even be in this video. I am not sure where I'm putting this little clip that I've just 
jumped in here to film. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just wanted to share my excitement for those, those products and, uh, and now I guess we'll get back on with the video. Oh, and I didn't even tell you how much I paid. They were like $3.90 in Singaporean dollars or Singapore dollars, um, which made it around $5, I guess, here. So that is such a bargain. I didn't have to pay for postage, so it was just $5 each tube. So yay for me. <laughs> and so here is the final look at how my cover page turned out for the April month. And now we're turning over and getting started on the page that I like to call my goodliness spread. This month I have only got four habits to track because I really want to just be successful in ticking them off as most often as I can. And I'm finding that the more habits I track, the less I tend to fill it out. So this one's going to be easy. There's only four, sleep, health, fitness, and save. Very important things. And I really think that's the main focus of my brain at the moment. So I'm gonna see how that goes. I also use the rest of this page to track some gratefulness. So anything that I'm feeling I want to express gratitude for throughout the month, I will just write on this spread here. Now for the decoration of this spread, I decided to focus on Singapore's national animal, which is the lion. So from what I read, the reasoning behind the lion being the national icon of Singapore is that it not only represents strength, courage and excellence, but also has a pretty cool myth that talks about how a Malay prince was shipwrecked on the island and in the distance him and his crew spotted what looked like a lion. So they named the city Lion City, which in Sanskrit was Singapura and then translates into Singapore that's as we know it today so it's known as the lion city so i thought a great way to exhibit that would be to draw the mer lion sculpture so the mer lion sculpture is about eight and a half meters tall and sits near the cbd overlooking marina bay so the national icon of the lion head is explained in that past story but then the fish bottom of the mer lion is symbolizing the original roots of Singapore, which it was a fishing village. So they've obviously combined, combined the two elements together and it has become such an incredible symbol that you see everywhere throughout Singapore. This was one of our first day trips. I think on the second day that we arrived in Singapore, we went to hunt down this statue and take the classic shots of uh, catching the water from the fountain that sprays out of its mouth. So it was, it was pretty busy down there, but still not as busy as I thought it might be. But we had a really cool adventure just walking there from our hotel near Clark Quay. So it took us about 20 minutes, half an hour, but actually we probably extended it because we kept stopping at every place along the way, taking photos and doing the tourist thing. So we had a lot of fun that day. Now I normally like to put a quote from the country on this page as well to remind me of the gratitude. But there was a word or expression that stuck with me that I really wanted to include in here, hoping never to forget it. And that is the word la. From what I understand, la is an expression that you would add at the end of a statement to give it more emphasis or meaning. So it might be something unbelievable or it might be something exciting and you would just end the phrase with la. Like we went to the zoo and it was amazing, la. So I think I'm using that correctly, but I just really liked it. And the whole Singlish idea is pretty cool. If you Google Singlish, you'll see a whole bunch of phrases and words that have come from a blend of English and Chinese Malay origins. And that just made me think of one thing that I have to share with you. So on the MRT over there, which is the train system, every train stop has the little phrase of, you know, mind the gap, be careful, thanks for riding with us, that kind of thing. And every stop, it would say it in English and then it would say it in another language, which I think might've been Malay. And 
there's a phrase in it that says happy happy and us as a family we kept hearing that and it just kind of gave us little warm fuzzies thinking that that's what they were saying each stop you know have a great day be happy happy uh it turns out that i've just googled it and it turns out that it was not saying happy happy it was saying hati hati which in malay means be careful so it's actually just in malay saying about the gap and to mind your step sort of thing so that's something interesting i don't know if anyone has ever picked up that on the train as well but i've just googled it and yeah found an article saying that so i thought i'd share it here just in case but yeah i really liked the idea that it was saying happy happy because i found all the all the information was just delivered in such a fun happy way uh even you know like the signs on the train and the advertising it just all seemed very friendly and happy so there you go a random interesting but totally pointless fact from my journey and now this is my gratitude page finished and we will move on to the next one now this next page is my mind map spread which is where i like to dump any information that don't have a placement elsewhere in the journal so ideas that come to me throughout the month or things I don't want to forget or just a random area to write notes um, this is where I'll do it on my mind map page and the mind map if you've been watching before always has a lady of choice from the country or someone well recognized from the country as well now it was a tricky one to find for someone well known or well recognized um, unfortunately i didn't really come across one from singapore um, but i did come across some before i left i actually researched who i might do and it was really bizarre so i narrowed it down to a couple of choices before i left and one of them was a girl called Rachel Lim. And she is an entrepreneur and someone who has created a fashion label over there that's now spread across um, many countries. And it was called Love Bonito. And so I had known this in my head before I had gone to Singapore. And then as we were walking through Vivo City, I think it was, and Orchard Road as well, there was big neon signs saying love Bonito. And I just remember saying to Mark, oh my gosh, that's the that's the company that, um, that Rachel Lim started. So I went into this shop and had a little look around and yeah, it was really cool because it solidified the reason that I wanted to do Rachel Lim for my mind map. So she's the co-founder of Love Bonito, which is a fashion brand designed for real everyday women. And it's affordable and really follows the woman's journey through life and isn't made for just one kind of body. She tries to tailor it to all different sorts of body shapes. So it's doing really well across the world um, and especially in the Southeast Asia sort of area. So one thing that I'll mention here as well, because it's completely relevant, is the fact that I couldn't believe the designer brands in Singapore. It is known as a shopping hub. It is a shopping haven if you are that way inclined. I found it amazing how many Louis Vuittons I saw, Gucci's, Chanel's, all those big brand names, not only just on Orchard Road, but also um, in the Marina Bay Sands shopping malls and... I think there was spread around the city as well, just sort of random stores. I honestly don't know how they would survive because it's not like the products are cheap and I feel like a lot of the tourists wouldn't spend overly on that kind of stuff, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, but yeah, I just found it really interesting. So although I didn't really shop properly and buy anything there, I did love being around it. The atmosphere felt really, really cool. Just. The way that the shops were fit out and decorative, and I work in signage, so I really loved the signs. Um, there's just a lot of attention to detail and a lot of glamour, and it was really interesting to see how everything was placed. It just, it basically showed how lackluster some of the places are that where I'm from. It's, it, it was just such a weird contrast to see like our high-end shopping malls here look like they're 
low-end budget buy places you know like just the contrast is huge so yeah that's what my experience of the Singapore shopping was like if you're into that kind of thing you will love it it is definitely the place to find all your favorite brands but yeah so I thought that would be relevant here and that's something that we did while we were on the trip and then I'm coloring her in colored pencils just using my Prismacolor pencils and then in the background I thought I would include the national flower of Singapore which is a beautiful orchid its proper name is Papillionanth Miss Joaquim don't know if I'm saying that right but it's also referred to as the Singapore orchid so that's what I will call it it is a hybrid flower that blooms pretty much all year round and it's very hardy and beautiful and vibrant and I thought it definitely deserved a spot here and the best place to see these orchids in real life, if you're ever in Singapore, is it's actually the world's biggest display of orchids and that's at the National Orchid Garden in Singapore. Such an amazing place full of orchids. If you're a flower person, you gotta go there. <laughs> So after I finished the colored pencil portrait of Rachel, I decided to use some marker in the background. The purpley pinkness of these orchids was just so vibrant. So I really wanted to try and show that. Um, and then also just finished off this spread with the words mind map. And I also tried to keep it like the Love Bonito styles. So that's why I went for all these pinky tones as well. So it all just kind of worked quite feminine and fashion-y like together as one with the flowers. But I did think it felt a little bit blank at the end. So I used some washi tape on her dress and or her top and that seemed to just finish off the page for me. And so this is how it turned out. And now moving on to my final set of pages, which are my weekly spreads. And here I wanted to include as much as I could about the trip. So I thought I would choose a day for each week. So four of the big things that I can think of that we did when we were over in Singapore that I was really impressed by and something iconic and I just wanted to remember them are as follows. Firstly, the Universal Studios on Sentosa Island had such a ball there. What an amazing place to visit. So I've never been to a Universal Studios before. Uh, the last time I went to a theme park, I was probably 12 or 15, something like that. So it has been a while. And to be honest, I'd actually forgotten what theme parks are like. And when I, <laughs> it didn't happen until after my first or second ride that I remembered that I don't actually like rides very much. <laughs> So that was, that was news to me. Um, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, being in Singapore, it helped me to basically get some exposure therapy on a lot of fears that I have. I have a fear of lifts and in particular lifts without mirrors because they feel smaller. So then I've kind of diagnosed myself as maybe a little bit claustrophobic. So I also don't love um, toilets if they don't have any um, breathing space at the bottom and top you know if you're in an enclosed toilet with a lock that kind of freaks me out so it makes life a little bit diff difficult when you can't easily get in a lift or a public toilet um, without uh, feeling a little bit anxious and it's not to the point where I need to get therapy for it it's not something that's actually ruining my life at all um, but I did I have talked about with my husband some exposure therapy to do with it. Um, so this was really forced upon me. The hotel, we had to go up five floors in the elevator and then go up another three each day. So we had to do two lifts every day in the morning and the evening. Um, not to mention the fact that most places where you visit is multiple stories. So there were so many lift visits that by the end of the trip, I felt great in lifts. It was all good. <laughs> so that was one fear accomplished. Um, I have in the past experienced vertigo before. Maybe it's not something I get all the time, but I've always thought that I'm a bit, not afraid of heights, but I thought that I get dizzy at heights. So I had to go right up to the top of the Marina Bay Sands on level 57 and in a lift, might I add. Um, but when I was up there, I was fine. So that was good. I was conquering that fear, <laughs> even though I was very anxious in the lift, crammed in with lots of other people. Um, I kept asking my daughter to count to 10 in Japanese to distract me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we made that through. 
And then just other things like the train. I had no idea that I don't love trains, but the trains were underground, so there's nothing out the windows. Now that's not something I'm used to because here in Perth, our trains are all on top of the ground. And so you get to see out as you're, as you're going. But being in a tunnel, I didn't realize, but that must be part of the claustrophobia. I felt very uneasy in the first day or two um, being on the trains. But then once again, I ended up loving them because I had to do it every single day and it was like this exposure therapy. By the end, I did not worry at all. I mean, millions of people live in cities where they have to go underground in a train all the time and, you know, don't end up getting trapped or whatever. I think I've just watched too many movies about people getting trapped in lifts or trains. Or <laughs> so it's really like a proper fear of mine. But now I feel like I've made big strides and hopefully I can keep those in my mind for the next time I need to go in a lift or a train. So anyway, I digress. Um, a lot of these fears I had to cope with over there and I feel really proud that I got through them. And one of the other fears that I was not even really aware of until I was there was at Universal Studios. Um, we went on the very introductory ride of um, a Sesame Street Space Wars ride which was very calm and lovely so I was fine on that and then the next one we went on was the Transformers ride now that ride was epic I absolutely loved it but I did experience some anxiety during it and afterwards my daughter my youngest Quinn she was like very very still in the actual ride and then at the end she just burst into tears she was so scared up and it just made me remember that yeah I was afraid to and that's right I don't love roller coasters I hope there's not too many roller coasters here and the next minute is every ride every other ride is a roller coaster yeah so luckily I was able to use my daughter as an excuse for me not to go on the high speed roller coasters. Um, and we just stuck to the more easygoing rides, but we had the best time and, and the kids absolutely loved it. So I had to definitely put this as a memorable moment in my journal. And then moving on to page two. So behind that Universal Studios, I wanted to start creating like a city skyline of my favorite spots or adventures from the trip. So the next one was the Cloud Forest and the Flower Dome. Now these two huge dome structures are down in Gardens by the Bay and they are just amazing. Like I have no words to describe it. We went into the Cloud Forest first and it is all Avatar themed at the moment. I don't know if that's a permanent thing, but at the moment it's Avatar inspired. So it's this massive vertical garden that is like a cloud forest, all misty and refrigerated in there with the most tropical, luscious flowers and plants just growing on every surface. And it's just this adventure as you walk through it around and up over bridges and up around the glass dome. It's just an incredible experience. And there was also these waterfalls falling from what seemed like the sky or the top of the dome that sometimes would like splash you a little bit just in a nice refreshing way. Um, and then it had all this avatar themed sculptures around um, and and this one banshee kind of moving it was animatronic and um, my girls were taken taken aback by that they loved watching it in fact I loved it too it's definitely more for everyone not just kids um, but yeah so many photo opportunities it was my favorite thing ever like it was our favorite day all of us agreed that the cloud forest was the highlight of our trip so I absolutely 100% recommend going to the cloud forest I just adored it. I really felt like I was in Avatar, the way they had the immersive sounds and the creatures and then all this real foliage that looked like you're on an alien planet. It was just amazing. So that's what I loved the most. And then after the cloud forest, we went into the flower dome, which is the slightly smaller of the two, but filled with once again, amazing flowers and plants from around the world. Um, so really, really impressed by that. And then behind that, I worked on the super trees, which are at the Gardens by the Bay as well. And they are just incredible. Once again, these metal structures that rise up into the sky, covered with lush foliage. And at nighttime, they illuminate and there's like a light show that dances on them.
So that's that was incredible. So everything down at the Gardens by the Bay was just so inspiring and unusual and unique and I just loved it all. And then finally on the very last page of the weeklies I decided to put the very iconic skyline feature of Singapore which is the Marina Bay Sands Towers um, and on the top is the sky deck which looks like a giant boat just perched on these towers and we could see this from our hotel room um, and so we saw it lit up at night a lot from our hotel and then one of the nights we ended up going there at night time to see the light show that's down in the bay beneath it um, so that was incredible as well just it was really high up 57 floors up um, amazingly I didn't feel like it was swaying at all the engineering to make something like that is just mind-blowing um, but yeah absolutely beautiful and beautifully designed buildings and just such a spectacle to see so definitely recommend that as well and I'm sure you've seen all the photos of the Marina Bay Sands with the infinity pool that flows over the edge and it's just such an iconic place. So really loved that and seeing the Singapore from up above like that. So I think I've officially worn out my voice. I feel like I've talked a lot. I'm sorry if I didn't talk enough or tell you enough about my trip. I'm sure it'll come up again in future videos. I'll probably do another bloody um, art video soon to express more. Or if it was too much talking for you, I do apologize. Um, I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about Singapore. And if you hadn't been there, that you learned something interesting. And otherwise, I thank you so much for being here and for watching and stick around. I'm about to make the choices for next month's journal theme. Okay, so now for the choices for the month of May, uh, we've got our countries, our large countries over 30 million, middle countries under 30, but up woods upwards of 8 million and then the third one which is under 8 million so let's get started I'll do it really quick and I never know what to say when I pull these things out so I'm just going to not say anything so it doesn't give anything away yeah I think that's a good idea okay we've got one we've got okay Spain <laughs> then we have we have one that went open we have Sweden And third one, now we have, we have Bulgaria. <laughs> all right, I actually really love all those choices. Um, that was hard not to say anything at all. So we have Spain, Sweden, Bulgaria. Hopefully my reactions didn't sway you one way or the other. Um, I'm completely at your will. So leave your votes down below in the comments and let me know if you enjoyed this setup by liking the video and subscribing if you wanna see more. Um, yeah, I really appreciate you being here and um, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, bye.